All right, welcome back. And today we're gonna be taking a look at this power supply. RS game, 500 watt AGV, 500 watt power supplies, 80 bronze plus. So first off, this is not sponsored by no means, but I figured this would actually be a cool review to do on this power supply. So why are we reviewing it? Well, as you know, power supplies have skyrocketed tremendously. And to find a power supply that's decent for a decent price, well, you're not gonna really find it. Typically, I prefer Corsair as my go-to for power supplies, and I like EVGA for my go-to for power supplies, but lately I've been seeing them for $70, $80 for a 500 watt brand new, and even upwards of $200 plus for anything over 850 watts and so on and yada, yada, yada. So, I do a lot of swaps, and one of the swaps I do is uh, Optiplex into a modern day gaming case. I also do that with Lenovo's and other ones. And then we do a lot of intro and budget gaming computers and we need to get power supplies. So now when you're buying a power supply, I typically don't like to buy used. Now EVGA's website, you could buy their B-Stock power supplies. They do have warranty. Those are fine. But the issue that I find out with power supplies is that you don't know how heavy that power supply has been used. The seller could say light to moderate gaming. Well, Light to moderate gaming for me is maybe two to three hours a day. Some sellers might be six to eight hours a day. So you don't know what their definition of light to moderate gaming. You don't know if they did extreme overclocking or, you know, what they did to that computer to really put a stress on it. And there is some degradation in power supplies I have found, and I'm not going to get into that now. But there is some degradation that you do find that you lose that power efficiency eventually. And when you try to push your computer a little bit, they do crap out. So... When I'm building these budget computers, one thing that could break the bank is a power supply. So I found this one, 500 watts, $40, it was on Amazon. And I bought it, and I want to see how it works and how well it does. So let's open it up. And as you can see, they give you a nice little notice up here. Let's see if I can get that in the shot. And it's just telling you to use their cables, use safe operation. Uh, test tools are part of the accessories, including the box, solid operations at low to moderate loads, and this mode will not allow the fan to spin. And we'll talk about that in just a second. That's actually pretty cool and pretty key when you're doing these builds. So I've already opened this up. I've already used it and tinkered it with a little bit, and then I decided to do a review. The biggest thing I do like about it is the packaging. Check this out. This is actually pretty decent packaging considering the price of $40. I mean... This dances around and it's got all this cushion foam on it. And that's one thing I look for is the packaging. You know, if I get a power supply that's coming from halfway across the United States, then I want this thing to be secure. And a lot of times shipping lately, especially um, New Egg per se, yes, I will call them out. They're shipping, they just kind of throw things in there and they don't secure it. And sometimes Amazon has been guilty of that. But at least when you buy this product, the company itself secures it very well. So that's a plus. All right, let's take this thing out. We'll look at it in just a sec. Comes with your power cord, typical. Um, this was to actually to hold the wires together when it was in the box. Wire ties, which I think is awesome. I mean, everybody should have wire ties. And it comes with four screws, which I like because they're black, and most cases are black, and that's ideal. Comes with your power supply tester. So this is good if you're filling up water cooling loops. If you're going to put this in a water cooling build, I don't think I'd do it for a 500 watt power supply, but still you have it. And this is a good tool to have your instruction manuals, which, you know, for new people, ain't nothing wrong with having that. So pretty good. Another thing that it did have was it had a little card and I lost it. I don't know what I did with it, but the card pretty much stated that if you go on Amazon, do a review and submit the company a link to the review, they're actually going to send you an RGB mouse and power supply uh, rgb mouse pad or something something to that effect one of those pads that blink and do all the flashy colors on that just to give you an update i haven't received it yet i actually did the review the other day but the person who's the rep who's in charge of it has actually been in contact with me and it's actually been an actual person via email and they just said hey just send us the link we'll send it to you yada 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 and then they informed me that okay it's on the way so it's actually cool that i'm not talking to a robot or automated system there's actually a person that's actually been typing and doing that so that's pretty cool so let's get this box out of here let's take a look at the power supply so the first thing i do like about it and i want to talk about is the fan the fan has that silent operation mode, so depending on the load and the temperatures, it's going to spin 
as high as low as it needs to to help cool it and keep this power supply efficient using this power supply i can tell you right now it is very quiet i mean very 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 quiet and even when it's spin up under certain loads like when i'm doing cpu testing it's still very inaudible so definitely happy with that and i think that's a very good feature to have on this power supply so just kind of gives you the specs on it nothing too fancy all right i did get uh this is the non-modular one so you have all these lovely cables so if you have extra cables you better be good at cable management to kind of help you clean up your case and your look but for the most part for 40 yeah 40 dollars the aesthetic is actually not too bad now this sticker does come off so if i do actually put this in a build and it's visible you know i could peel these stickers off which i typically do if they have the little provision on the cases to kind of see this i just like to have the cl the clean black aesthetic and sometimes i'll take these stickers and i'll just put them on the top and you'll never see it but we'll still have all these um specs for the power supply looking at the cable of course the 24 pin is sleeved let's get that out of here our 24 pin is sleeved nice and our other cables i mean they're just they're black and that's fine and that's great no ketchup and mustard over here let's take a look at how many they give you so you got one two three satas over here on one rail and let's see what else and on this rail you have one sata so four satas one molex well two molex and then this your little floppy thing which i don't know what you use these for anymore so if you know that definitely comment down below because i don't know what you use them for anymore and molex because a lot of pump reservoir combos do still use these some fans and companies still use these so i guess it's handy to have molex but hey it is what it is now let's talk about over here this is our cp yeah this is our cpu one so it has our eight pin uh, two eight pin ones and then it kind of slides off to become a four of does it yeah, no i think it does well maybe it doesn't yeah it does slide apart to become two four pins so depending on what you're using you have the bridge vision for that i cpu power which i'm not going to make assumptions on it but as you can see it's two wires coming from in it so i don't know if it's sharing the same rail per se but you have two wires that are coming into it and then a splitter so you could actually accommodate an eight pin and a six pin so that's going to kind of help you with some of the mid to some high range graphics cars but you know at this point 500 watts how crazy are you going to go with this so just kind of keep that in mind i personally like to have two separate rails for the pci express ones just for heavier duty loads but 500 watts it's fine and that's pretty much about it so now power supplies they're kind of hard to do reviews on because i mean you could put it on a heavier computer and see if it craps out on you or try to set it on fire i don't know but in this case we're just going to pop it in our ryzen 9 3900 uh, excuse me ryzen 9 5900x bench that we've been doing it's not my test bench but we're actually doing a lot of videos and some builds on it so let's go ahead let's pop it in here let's see if it fires on to do a quick stress test and then we'll call my shots on it and reviews. All right, so just want to talk about this as far as the connectors. When they go plugged in, to the motherboard they actually feel very secure very firm i've actually used cheaper power supplies where these kind of dance and wiggle this feels real snug and it's secure so if you do have some a case that has like a little tight clearance or anything like that you don't have to worry about this being cocked or causing any type of issue as far as that so they are pretty snug and they're pretty decent on that so i just wanted to mention that the same thing with the sata i've actually used uh, power supplies where the sata power it just dances around it doesn't feel secure and you can actually literally pop it out by pulling it these things click in and they feel very secure on that so something very important to note and something good to know as far as this power supply so for forty dollars yeah at least that's secure let's fire it up simple and easy so now the first thing i want to note and let's see if i can get it over here fan is very quiet I mean, it's spinning, it's spinning its airflow, it's doing its job, but it's very quiet, and I like that. I actually use a EVGA power supply. 
I actually used the EVGA power supply, and with that power supply, the issue I kept on running into is that when I started getting into uh, heavy games and maxed out settings and stuff like that, the power supply just kept on ramping up so loud, and one reason why I'm not a huge fan of EVGA, I just find their power supplies to be very loud. I'm sure they have quieter ones, but the ones I have are just loud, so, all right. Boot into Windows, let's see if we get that right over here, let's go to AIDA64 Extreme. We're going to do just a heavy stress test on this computer. I'm not worried about the graphics card. Um, like I said, I just want to show that this power supply works. If it could do an extreme test on a 5900X, uh, just full heavy load, then I'm sure it'll have no issue with you know, an i7 third gen or an i5 third gen and some of these Lenovo's or Dell's I'll use. So uh, we'll go over here to tools, system stability tests. We're just going to kind of get that in there. Stress memory, stress local disk, stress GPU. Uh, no. Okay. Let's start it. All right. So we're already at 100% on the CPU. Let's minimize this. Let's look at our CPU hardware info. All right. Let's leave this test running for about five minutes. We'll come back and we'll see if the computer's still running. All right, so time got away from me, and this has been going AIDA64 stress test for about 34 minutes. Now, as you can see, computer is running, power supply quiet, everything's quiet. My core temps, which is why I like clean power and I'm good on the 80 bronze, and yeah, this definitely gets the job done, are... 4.4 and the boost clocks for this are 4.4 or 4.3 I forget I'll put it somewhere below but as you can see we've actually had great stability and no issues with a five with this 500 watt cheap power supply on this CPU which is a 5900x now granted the TDP on this is only 105 so between this load and everything that's going on I'm sure we even ha we haven't even touched anywhere near or if maybe just at the half mark of this 500 watt power supply so now if we popped in a beefier video card more fans and you know we loaded this thing up it definitely wouldn't ha be able to handle it and it's no fault of the power supply it would just be the fault of only 500 watts so now this power supply comes in 650 and 750 watt I'm not sure if they have an 850 not sure but it does that and the 750 watt power supply is $80 650 watt is $650 and as a film in this Amazon has a 20% discount off of it so definitely decent one thing I do look for in these power supplies is the weight this thing actually has it's not heavy as compared to some power supplies I do but it is decent it doesn't feel cheap it def this power supply definitely does not feel cheap and it does not run cheap as far as the performance of it or just the way it runs over it so overall the aris game agv 500 watt power supply if you're looking for a 500 watt power supply brand new for 40 dollars that's going to handle your swaps or your budget gaming builds i definitely go for this i mean you could take a chance on a new one for about 30 40 dollars with shipping on ebay or you could just get this for 40 dollars on amazon free shipping just pay your tax on it maybe 45 dollars you're good to go so that's my review on the power supply definitely like it definitely recommend it we'll probably get a couple more for some other builds i got going on so definitely check it out pretty good deal for the money thanks for watching comment down below let me know your thoughts on power supplies ones you like ones you don't like and um as always we'll see what we come up with next